Okay. Um, this leads us to music. So, uh, piano keyboard up top, middle C in the middle of the keyboard. A above middle C is tuned to be at 440 hertz. What's a hertz? A hertz is one cycle per second. Or how many are cycles per second? Um, the idea is that this is actually the flip of finding the period. The period tells you how, many, uh, how long one cycle is per, in seconds. Hertz tells you the kind of the flip, how many cycles occur in one second. So one hertz would be one cycle per second. Two hertz, two cycles per second. When I proposed to my wife, that was six. <laughs> um, with a very large amplitude. Um, but at 440 hertz is what A above middle C is. And so you can actually get Mathematica to play that for us. Can you hear that all right? That's the program Mathematica synthesizing that note. So those of you that have Mathematica and you never played with trying to make sound on it, you know, this is a rather nice feature to, to start playing around with the notes. And of course, if you start uh, banging the notes together, you get uh, some music. Sound of music. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that's uh, just Mathematica being programmed to produce those particular notes. Uh, for in general, the function goes like this: f of n of t is a sine of two to the n over twelve times eight hundred and eighty pi t. Let me write that nice and big. And this is kind of the, uh, with some simplification, this is basically the sound that occurs when you bang, bang the nth note above the A above middle C. Musicians, what's the significance of the number 12? The number of notes in an octave. Counting the black keys, there are 12 notes between one A and the next A that occurs one octave up. Okay? So that's the uh, function that basically produces um, the notes that occur when you bang on a piano keyboard. Um, Right here is a, a kind of a uh, sketch of the frequencies that occur on a piano keyboard. So the piano keyboard's at the bottom, and then um, the contrabassoon is the next note above that, and the piccolo, the number 20 up there, at the far right plays only the high notes. And in between, as you know, all the range of a piano keyboard. Down here um, on the uh, bottom scale is the range of your typical bass versus a, a baritone versus a soprano in notes. Now notice that the pattern you see here in the frequencies, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100, big jump, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 7,000, big jump, 2,000 hertz, 3,000 hertz, 4,000 hertz. What kind of scale is that? When you see it, bunch of 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 900, big jump, 2,000, 3,000. That is a logarithmic scale. That's a logarithmic scale. So um, for those of you that ever play with a log-log plot, you see kind of graph paper that looks like this, as opposed to just a straight up graph paper, which are evenly spaced. So if your students ever ask you what's the application of a logarithmic scale, you can literally point to a piano keyboard. Okay? The, the notes that occur are going to go up logarithmic as, logarithmically as you go from left to right. Okay, a little bit of practice. Find the value of n so that the frequency is 880 hertz. Find the value of n so that the frequency is 880 hertz. Okay, remember what a frequency is. Frequency is 1 over the period. So rather than being 2 pi over b, it's b over 2 pi, where b is a thing that multiplies the variable. Okay, so for our problem, we have um, 2 to the n over 12 times 880 pi divided by 2 pi, and I want to set that equal to 880 hertz. So the question is, what's the value of n that makes that work? Well, 
multiply. Okay, so let's see. We get two pi cancels here. So I get 2 to the n over 12 times 440 equals 880. So 2 to the n over 12 is equal to 2. And the only way that happens is if this n is equal to 12. N equals 12. What does that mean on the keyboard? That's an octave above. So if I go 12 notes up, starting at A, then move up 12 notes up to the next A, the frequency doubles going from one A to the next A. Okay. If I go the other direction, 12 notes down, then it'd be 220 hertz. If I go up two octaves, I multiply by four. So every time you go up an octave, it multiplies by two. When you go down by an octave, it divides by two. Yep. So uh, the n in the equation is the number of notes above middle C or above A? Uh, above A. Okay. N is the number of notes above A. So in order, to, so if n equals zero here, you get 440. Okay, let's do one that's a little bit more interesting. 1320. What's the relationship between 1320 and middle A, A but middle C? Well, that's going to be three times higher as opposed to two times higher or four times higher. Now what? If you knew this one in your head, you're a better person than I. So 2 to the n over 12 times 440 is equal to 1320. So 2 to the n over 12 will be equal to 3. So what value of n do you need to make 2 to the n over 12 be equal to 3? Yeah, we need a logarithm. The unknown's in the exponent, so we got to use our logarithms to get that one. So let's take the uh, log of both sides. We get um, uh, natural log of 2 to the n over 12 is equal to natural log of 3. So n over 12 times natural log 2 is natural log 3. So finally, n is equal to 12 times the natural log of 3 divided by the natural log of 2. Okay, so that's not going to be an integer. All right, who's got my calculator that can give me the answer? What's that? It should be like 19, right? We got my calculator? We're gonna get down on it. It's not 19 what? 19.01. 19 Almost 19 <coughs> on the nose. Almost 19 on the nose. Now that's not one octave, it's not two octaves, it's how many, it's 19, an octave is 12, so that's seven notes higher than one octave. Seven notes higher than one octave, hold that thought. Same problem, this time for five. Two to the n over 12 times um, 880 pi over two pi. Let's set that be equal to not three times 440, but 5 times 440. Anybody want to take a guess at what the answer is going to be this time if I have 2,200 there as opposed to 1,320? Okay. 12 times natural log 5 this time over natural log 2. Now, once again, that's not going to be an integer. Let's see what it is. 12 natural log 5 divided by natural log 2. 27.86. So decently close to 28. So that's more than two octaves. It's four notes higher than two octaves. Okay, so let's think about this. Um, so these numbers are rather important. Let's start with our C here. If I go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that takes me to that G. And if I go from start of the C and go up one, two, three, four notes, that takes me to that E there. 
C, E, and G. What is that? C major, C major chord. That's a major chord. Okay. If I here you see here the actual graph of those uh, uh, um, notes being banged together. Now it's not perfectly periodic because those are not integers, but it's pretty close. I mean the cycle that goes from here to here looks very much the same as the cycle that goes from here to here. Very looks like the cycle that goes from here to here. It's not a perfectly periodic, but it's very, very close. And so when I actually play that note, it sounds pretty good. Major chord, C, E, and a G. And so if you put a few of these things together, of course, you get music. <laughs> that is not mathematical. <laughs> All right, here we go. F and A. So if I take those notes and I look up uh, how many notes those are above A, A above middle C, like that, it also sounds pretty good. And if I look at the wave pattern, what happens from here to here looks very much the same as what happens from here to here and so on. It's not perfectly periodic, but it's pretty close and sounds pretty good. <laughs> 